All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television show in the history of the universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. <clears throat> Today I'm going to be reviewing an old classic. It is Fritz Lieber, Swords Against Death. This is book number two in his Fafard and the Grey Mouser series. Fafard and the Grey Mouser, of course, are two adventuring thieves and swordsmen that travel throughout the lands of Lankamer and around, well, the city of Lankamer and the lands surrounding it. Anyway, <clears throat> the book came out in 1970. It is book two. I did review already the first book in the series, which is titled, um, Swords and Devilry. They're all falling. I can't do one video without books just falling. Oh my gosh. So let's put these up and we'll lean them like that so they don't fall. Anyway, if you want to see my review of book number one, just type in, um, Swords and Devilry and my last name into the YouTube search bar. That review will come right up. Anyway, let's talk about this. Cover first. You know I love graphic design and cover illustrations, so let's talk about these classic Fritz Lieber covers. They're great. This painting was done by Jeff Jones, one of the, um, I mean, just one of the classic illustrators of the uh, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Just great, you know. It's got a nice look to it. <clears throat> um... If we put the whole series together, um, they all look pretty good on the shelf, except for the final volume, which has a completely different, um, completely, I don't know why they d just designed it differently. I mean, publishers sometimes, you know, make stupid decisions, um, but every, uh, and otherwise, well, if you want to get the whole set that Ace pub put out, it's, it's going to look like this. All the covers are going to have a similar theme with a similar illustrator until you get to the final book, and then it's just a shit mix of nonsense. <clears throat> Not sure why. I just, you know, it's just one of those uh, pet peeves that I've got. Well, hope those don't fall down there. Anyway, Swords Against Death, let's talk about this. Uh, Fafard and the Grey Mouser. Fafard is the giant sort of barbarian guy. Okay, so one of the covers, this cover was done by Michael Whalen. So this gives you a good idea of the characters we're dealing with. Fafard is the big guy, sort of the barbarian, and the little guy is the gray mouse or sort of the thief. But they're both thieves. They're both, in fact, they're the uh, most uh, iconic thieves in the history of fantasy. Now, when I first read these books, and these are uh, books that I bought when I was a kid, I, it got me hooked on thieves and thievery. I mean, these guys are the reason there is a thief class in Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, Fafard and the Grey Mouser, they were just the iconic thieves of fantasy world for at least 20 years. And uh, every fantasy fan should probably read these books because they're very, they read, the prose is very much like um, Robert E. Howard's Conan novels. So if you kind of like those type of stories, that's what you're going to get. It starts out, this book number two starts out with um, uh, our thieves. It just kind of gives a basic background of uh, their thievery and the years of adventuring. Their story. There's about two or three to five pages of them. Just it, it just talks about what they've been going through since book one, which is like years of thievery, you know, hiring themselves out as mercenaries and bodyguards and this, that, and the other. And then they get involved in this... Uh, this uh, jewels of the forest like chapter where they uh, where they're, they're, they're it's kind of like an Indiana Jones esque action tale um, that involves a peasant girl and skulls and jewels and uh, treasure hunting and uh, it's just got a lot of action and adventure and thievery in it and then um, they, we kind of get into the thieves guild part of the uh, story. Um, a chapter called Thieves' House, and these chapters are kind of like little short stories just strung together to form a cohesive, um, 
novel. Um, they all sort of tie into each other, but there's and there's some some plot threads that sort of weave. But they, you can tell that they were all written as like individual short stories, but they all kind of fit together. The Thieves' House is um, where we learn about the Thieves' Guild of Lancomer and the back alleys and the and the uh, there's a red haired wenches and uh, it's the best. In fact, it's just the best thief story in fantasy. Just that little. Probably it's about it's probably the longest section of the book, but it's um, it's the re it, literally it is the reason um why like I said thieves became a class in uh, Dungeons and Dragons is probably based off of that chapter itself, um and then and then our adventurers they go on this kind of long journey, a uh, long voyage on a ship uh, they're traveling through gothic gothic lands of darkness and um the seven black priests that they meet and creepy dolls, creepy like dolls and uh, volcanoes and lava flows and ice, uh, ice and glaciers. And I mean, it's just, this little book is packed with so much adventure, reptiles and, and um, beguiling women. And uh, you know, it's ghosts. <laughs> I can keep naming the things that they run into. It's just a bazaar of, uh, it's just a bazaar of the bazaar. Uh, bazaar of the bizarre. Yeah, if that makes sense. But they're, they're, they're the same word, but they mean, and they're spelled differently, but they mean to, it's a bazaar of the bizarre. Um, it reads like that. I mean, the whole book just reads like that. It's just cool fantasy. It's just cool, old school, well-written fantasy. And it's iconic. And it's kind of what a lot of the foundation of modern day fantasy is sort of built upon. Is a lot of what Fritz Lieber did with these two thieves and their adventuring. Like I said, very Conan the Barbarian esque in writing style and storytelling style. And it's just delightful. The banter between these two characters, that's probably something I should have mentioned right at the beginning. One of the great things about this book is the way these two characters interact with each other and the people that they meet on their adventures. It's just actually, it's witty, it's fun, it's sarcastic, it's, um, <clears throat> I mean, they can be dangerous at the same time. It's just everything you want in a tale of the two greatest thieves that ever um, graced a fantasy. I mean, and here they are. Like Michael Whalen did the uh, quintessential... Uh, painting of these guys. Anyway, I give the uh, Swords Against Death a 9.5 out of 10. I only wish the stories were longer. Um, well, I guess I can't complain really because look how many stories there are. Anyway, that's my review of that.